If prison walls could talk, they'd reveal the true meaning of freedom and just how many long to escape the trials and tribulations that come with incarceration. Within these cells, plans to break free are concocted almost daily. Not all are brought to fruition. On May 15, 2019, officials at the Remand Prison Golden Grove discovered eight inmates missing. Within hours of the discovery, security forces were combing nearby forested areas and communities searching for the prisoners, deemed armed and dangerous, some awaiting trial for murder. Um, at just, just after 6, probably about half past 6, I received a call from the Deputy Commissioner Operations that eight persons were missing from their cell in the remand. And um, it's obvious based on my experience, I know if eight persons are missing from the cell, they would have escaped. Kerry Valentino, Atiba Seeley, Joshua Janet, Ola Tunji Denbo, Michael Findlay, Stephen Austin, Brent Johnson and Mikhail Mohammed evaded heightened law enforcement as they found their way to an unoccupied home in Las Lomas. The owners had only recently migrated and put the property up for sale through a real estate agent. Before dusk fell on the quiet central community, officers had circled in and recaptured five escapees holding one more the morning after. Initial reports suggest the men capitalized on construction work at the prison. Some speculated the inmates crawled through holes in the prison walls and under barbed fences to make good on their escape, while officers claim poor lighting and overcrowding in remand cells hindered the effective monitoring of inmates. How they escaped and with whose help remains under investigation. But the reason why they risked their lives in a mad dash for freedom came days later when Denbo and Findlay released a taped statement through social media claiming the state used a false witness to frame them for a 2016 double murder. Denbo said his motive for escaping was simple. At least three court matters I know about close to 10 men in jail. Like what is girl doing? See, I spent a deal over my head. <laughs> in my matter alone, there's five of you for the one murder. Relatives on both sides of the fence waiting on justice. But had a life to live. And we have a day in court sooner rather than later now, please. Denbo and Finley were recaptured 11 days after their escape and returned to lawful custody, this time assigned to the maximum security prison, a more modern facility with tighter security. For persons escaping lawful custody, those who are caught face another five years in jail and possible time in solitary confinement. For those who never dared to escape, the wait can be intolerable. Inmate Devon Suku has been on remand for 14 years. In the time he's been there, the Grand Bazaar Interchange, the Waterfront and the Government Campus Plaza have all been constructed. At the age of 20, he was accused of murder. I've been attending High Court since um, 2006. Makes it 13 years I've been appearing before judges, after judges, and nothing has been, no judge has ever made a step to start my trial. More than taking excuses from prosecution and defense attorneys. The situation is more than frustrating. He says it's depressing. The state is aware that the conditions on remand are inhumane and unacceptable. In 2017, a joint select committee examined the impact on mental health and family life of the remandees at the remand prisons. Parliamentarians were taken into the remand sections of the prisons and saw the state of the prisons for themselves. But one former parliamentarian and criminologist, Professor Ramesh Deusran, believes there's another arm of the state who needs to be behind bars. It's almost like a joke. You have a set of judges, a few of them, and people from the judiciary visiting the prisons. What are you visiting the prisons for? You, you weren't there already. Carol Gobin gave a judgment on the dismal conditions of the prison. You remember that? Mm -hmm. So the judges know when you go in there, I think what will bring quick remedy is to put, put them in the cell for about two weeks. <laughs> and you will see how quickly you get remedies. And um, that drastic measure might help. Let them not only smell, let them feel. Deus Ryan, who has been studying criminology for decades, has also been conducting research on the nation's prisons. He recalls visiting the remand section 
and wasn't prepared for what he saw. And what shocked me in answer to your question was the look on their faces. They were like in the jungle. They were looking like animals. And that scared, scared me in terms of the subsequent possibilities of these people coming out. Deoshran met with inmates in groups and found that 90% of inmates were from government secondary schools or dropouts. But even more concerning, he says, are the thousands of children left behind by men and women behind bars. He says the longer inmates spent away from their family in squalid conditions with delayed justice is the more frustrated they become. So it would impact on the psychological conditions of these people and the subsequent consequence of that is also frightening. When they come out there, they more likely come out like beasts because of the damage done to their psyche. It's human for you to feel frustrated, angry, and with a potential for violence against the people or the system who treated you so. But with the aggression often aimed towards prison officers and at times ending in death, the criminology professors of the firm view that justice delayed is justice denied. Overall, the, the administration of justice has failed the prisoners because being in prison carries a certain stipulated amount of punishment. But the punishment generally experienced by prisoners now, especially those in the remand yard, are over and above the proportionality required. And somebody, he says, must be held accountable for the broken and fractured system cutting at the heart of social injustice. The experienced criminologist and former independent senator laments that numerous reports have been produced with recommendations on how to improve the prison system and reduce crime. However, he feels too many administrations have spent precious time pointing fingers at each other than utilizing the data to make informed policies. And it would all be useless, he says, without public support. Jared Wilson became prisons commissioner two years after three prisoners shot their way out of the Port of Spain prison, resulting in the death of a police officer. While he officially retired at the end of 2019, he left behind an investigation that continues to stay in the image of the prison service. Born in San Juan, Trinidad, Wilson grew up in a conservative family. He had big dreams and worked as a trainee reporter before landing a job with an engineering company as a trainee electrician. But when the construction sector started to dwindle, his aspirations took a new direction. And I decided to apply, you know, against the wishes of my mom because nobody would want you to join the prison service. But um, I don't know, there was this motivation to do so. And I did, I haven't regretted it at all. Wilson did well as a new prisons officer, learning the ropes as gatekeeper. In 1986, he was assigned to the remand unit in Port of Spain. It is from this experience he learned its workings inside out, triggering his passion for addressing the pains of those on remand. I can't recall any other country or even island where the judicial process is, takes this long. I've never heard, unless it's a real primitive, you know, and it's designed that way. But I really never, I think, oh, we, are, we are unique in our situation. Right. I, I can tell you, I can tell you about the cell phones, that is not unique. Yeah. But in terms of the length of time matters are taken to be processed, I really can't identify another place where that is. Yeah. Really can't. Having understood the system, Wilson moved on to several other areas before studying psychology and international relations at UWE. With a deeper knowledge of people, Wilson was reassigned to remand, where he continued his 35-year service. Now it's different because the gangs are more. Um, you have younger, well, now we have much younger persons coming into the system. And they are wiser than before. So they, 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 and then we didn't have, of course, the issue of the cell phones back then when I joined. So it was much easier. Now with the cell phone, it's becoming very difficult because of the... Um, the access to persons on the outside to, to call hits and, and what have you. So that, and it is even more difficult now with the, the Rasta Muslim. 
As he worked his way up the ranks, Wilson watched the ratio of the convicted to remand population flip from 60-40 to now the majority of persons behind bars are either awaiting trial, on trial, or awaiting appeals. Persons on remand for capital offences in Trinidad and Tobago can spend anywhere between 8 to 15 years awaiting trial. In the United Kingdom, persons charged with murder go to trial within one year to 18 months. In the United States, the accused have a right to a speedy trial and can face a judge in less than 18 months. It's forcing the prison service, Wilson says, to continue to maneuver the increasing remand population and its impact on the facilities they manage. It has improved tremendously. I'll tell you this, I remember as a P1 working in Port of Spain prison. There was a time we had 21 inmates in our cell. You could imagine that, Port of Spain prison. 21 inmates in our cell. They could not even lie down. But space limitation is just one of the major issues Wilson tried to address in his two years as prison's commissioner. In a refreshing breath of transparency, Wilson decided to remove the veil of secrecy over the prison service and invited Guardian Media into the prison facilities for a first-hand look. Our cameras were privy to the conditions relayed to the outside by ex-inmates through amateur phone footage leaked from within. And for the first time, we heard of how the judicial system was frustrating remandees and its impact on prison officers. It's a bit debatable, but it, it said that it's always after a search or after some use of force or something like that, that the inmates tend to send a message that you know, they shouldn't be punished at all or, or, or <clears throat> you know, no force should be used on them. So it's, it's more or less sending a message. To there are approximately 4,000 officers in the Trinidad and Tobago prison system. 19 killed in the last two decades make the prison service the most dangerous law enforcement job in this country. Wilson says every time an officer is killed, it affects the morale of the service and evokes high levels of anxiety. This prompted him to establish the high risk and threat assessment units to solicit information about possible attacks while he lobbied the state for protection through harsher legislation and personal firearm for officers. When asked about rogue prison officers and their role in damaging the reputation of the prison service, Wilson pointed out that increasing numbers have been charged with trafficking, but completely eliminating contraband from within prisons, he says, may be difficult. Current prisons commissioner Dennis Pulchan says the prison service does not hesitate to arrest or help prosecute rogue officers, but he admits that slow convictions often mitigate against setting deterrence. I hate to say it, but there's a, there's a, there's a small um, group of officers that we are trying to crack into um, who traffics, right? And um, it's not something we're happy about, but again, the court system is a bit slow. I have personally arrested an officer seven years ago, and he's in court for trafficking marijuana in the prison. And the matter is seven years old seven years and I'm just trying to get a conviction on him. During the time period we spent compiling this docu-series, Wilson retired and was replaced by Dane Clark who acted as commissioner for two months before Dennis Pulchan was installed. Pulchan, an officer with 37 years service, has worked in almost every single position within the prison without ever skipping a rank. For him, the state of remand is a major concern. While we are doing our part to, to, to search and apprehend officers and, and get them out of the system through suspension and then try to and have a conviction through the courts, uh, the judiciary is beating us. It's very, very slow. For both commissioners, the conditions on remand, the long wait for trials and trafficking all remain major challenges. What we need to do is clamp down a lot on these trafficking officers and in marijuana. We had something like a hundred packs of cigarettes being thrown over, left by the car park in, um, in Golan Grove, by the, in the garden there. About a hundred packs tied with, I think, a cell phone and something else. For the Spain prison, I can tell you that um, phones come over the wall mm -hmm. with drugs. I mean, it, it is very amazing that um, people will pack phones in a cake of marijuana 
and just toss it over the wall. Prison escapes and trafficking in prison are not unique to this country's prison system, nor is the manifestation of gang culture behind bars. The acting commissioner explains that the nation's prisons have become sacred territory for gang members since incarceration forces them to confess their allegiance to avoid being placed in cells with the opposing side. With more crime-fighting legislation on the horizon, there's an expectation that numbers behind prison walls may increase. Pulchan admits that a higher population would mean a higher cost on an already heavily burdened prison system. However, he understands why it has to be done. I would say, let us start looking at um, electronic monitoring and more community sentencing so it will ease up somebody's space. With the criminal element forming themselves into formidable groups, law enforcement agencies are doing the same. The prison service is now tackling the crime scourge from its vantage point, behind prison walls. Not only has the service pushed for authorized phones and video calling for inmates, it is anticipating video conferencing, night court, electronic monitoring, plea bargaining and parole to eliminate the backlog of cases and hopefully reduce the time of some spent on remand. But perhaps the greatest relief will come when the basic conditions of those presumed innocent are improved. But we, we have intentions to start rebuilding the rem part of the remand in uh, early March. So plans are underway to start construction in the remand. This is a phase by phase project. The rebuilding of remand is by no means a minor feat and will possibly take millions of dollars and many years. But the commissioners are satisfied that a more comfortable environment combined with the prison's push towards rehabilitation and reintegration will address the criminogenic needs of its clients and reduce the once revolving door of prisons. In part four of our Behind the Walls exclusive, we listen to some of the frustrations of prison officers to get a better understanding of how much the system has changed from within.